everybody. Welcome in. We're here with the new head coach of the Sardis Lions, B.J. Brooks. And B.J. Brooks is a very familiar guy with this county. He was born and raised here, correct? Correct. Edward county, and which we're about to get into. He's recently been named the new head coach for the Sardis Lions in football. And we've had a ton of people reach out and ask for this interview, so we're finally doing it for you guys. So, B.J., we're going to do, as always, kind of start off with a with, from a rolling start here. Where exactly were you born and raised, and where did you go to school at around here? Okay. I was born in Gadsden, Alabama, and uh, I actually went to two high schools. I went to Gadsden High School, and I finished at Glencoe High School. So I finished my junior and senior year at Glencoe High School. So the original Gadsden High? Correct. Before Gadsden City. Okay, gotcha. Uh, I know your sisters as well, and I've known you for years, and I know you've been around this football scene. This is no mystery about you, but tell us when and what got you into your coaching career. Well, what's kind of funny is, you know, since I, I got this job, uh, you know, I've just had a lot of people reach out, of course, and a lot of my buddies that's known me since elementary school and middle school, they, they joked around saying they always knew I was going to be a coach. I was the guy always in the classroom drawing up plays, drawing up all kinds of things. Uh, so they know that's what I always kind of wanted to do was, was be a coach. No doubt. And uh, you've coached several teams here in the county. What are those teams and what role were you in? So uh, just to kind of go through my – Every, all my stops, per se. Uh, I played football at Jacksonville State. I played linebacker there. Uh, I got out of it after a year and a half. Uh, I knew I wanted to get into coaching, and I was in education at Jacksonville State. So I actually had an opportunity to start working at Cherokee County with Trip Curry. Uh, so I kind of got spoiled my first year. Went fifth, uh, yeah, we went 15-0, and 0, won the 4A state championship, and mm. I coached linebackers there. Um, after that, I had the opportunity to come to Gazin City and work with Coach Billingsley while I was still in college. Uh, my first year there, I, I did I coached safeties. After that, the next two years, I coached uh, kind of a hybrid position between running backs and wide receivers. It really depended upon the formation of what position they were playing. Uh, after that, I worked at Aniana High School. Uh, we actually won a state championship there as well. Um, worked there for Don Jacobs. I coached tight ends, and that we were real multiple offensively, so he moved around a lot. I worked, you know. Phil Phillips, who's their, off, who's their head coach there now, he was the OC when I was there, and he's a brilliant offensive mind. Um, so I really learned and grew a lot underneath him, and I also coached the linebackers there. Uh, after there, I got the opportunity to come to Edwell High School, a, a local school here, and um, I was the offensive coordinator there. I coached DBs even my first year. I was there for four years. After that, I went to Gazin City. I worked for Bart Sessions my first year, and I uh, coached running backs. After that, I went to our – Ali, Coach Smith took over, and uh, I coached running backs there again. And after that, I've been at Hoover High School for the past three years, coaching wide receivers. Uh, with Coach Smith, but I kind of helped in the weight room as well. I was kind of his right-hand man. And then after that, uh, this year, I was more of direct, uh, director of operations. So I did a lot of different roles there. Do you consider yourself more of an offensive-minded coach at this point in your career or a defensive-minded coach? Well, what's crazy is I actually consider myself more of a defensive guy. And then when I got with uh, Coach Knowles, you know, he, he said, man, you know so much about offense. He said, you should be an offensive coordinator. And I kind of looked at it as like kind of going to the dark side a little bit. <laughs> but uh, but uh, that's kind of been my niche. And that's where really where I've, I've kind of spread my wings and learned. So I definitely consider myself more of an offensive guy. And speaking of Edelwall, Coach Matt Glover said it best. He said, if you ever want to be a good defensive coordinator, you better go learn how to coach offense. For and sure. vice versa, if you want to be a good offensive coordinator. You better learn how to go coach defense, and you've obviously done that at several stops. And when you name, have names like Trip Curry and, yeah. and and Phil Phillips and and others that you've coached under Josh Niblett, I mean you've definitely seen high-profile coaches, high-profile um, players at all levels. You coach, uh, Mr. Football at, at, at Cherokee County, sure. your first year was probably fun yeah. to watch. But with all that, and you blend it into a pot, why why now is it the time to become head coach? In, in your opinion. Well, because it was God's timing. Gotcha. Uh, his, if it was, if it had been my timing, I'd probably <laughs> been a head coach a long time ago. To be honest, you know. But uh, I love it. But uh, you know, his time is perfect. That's I, right. He's on this, and he knows everything. He That's knows right. best for me, even when I don't know what's best for myself. Uh, you know, just he's given me the opportunity to grow and be around a lot of great coaches and a lot of great minds and great communities and great systems. And uh, it takes a lot to really make a good football program, any kind of athletic program. Right. It takes good players. It takes community buy-in. Uh, just takes so many things, and uh, Lord's blessed me with that opportunity, and I'm, and I'm super excited about it. I was recently asked about you being hired there, and I said, it's just me talking now. I could be totally off base here. I said, I expect a Jay Gaines type fire mm -hmm. uh, when you come in and 
I mean, burn the boats, set the place on fire, get with the community, get with the middle school. I'm, I'm, I'm presuming, I'm just not putting words in your mouth, but what is your first approach when you first get there? My first approach is, of course, just going in, meeting the team, uh, getting the community as much as possible. Uh, I've already met with the team. I met with them last Wednesday, and I met with uh, some of the staff that was there. Um, you know, I just want to let the kids know what the standard is. I'm used to winning. That's what I expect. That's how it's going to be. Uh, if they don't want to be a part of that, of getting held to a standard every single day, then this probably ain't going to be the best place for them. I want them to be a part of it. And if they are going to be a part of it, they're going to be loved unconditionally every day. I'm going to do everything I can for those kids, for, for the boys, the girls, everybody in that community. Uh, I'm here to serve them. That's right. I'm going to serve them to the best of my ability. The staff, I'm going to serve them to the best of my ability. My administration, I'm going to serve them to the best of my ability. Um, you know what I'm excited, excited to see where it goes and get in there and get started. There's a, there's a very proud community up there that's been starving for this. So mm -hmm. I think it's, like you said, God's time, and he knows when the right time yeah. is and stuff. So I think it's a perfect storm. You you know, you're going to come in on fire, and, and that place is looking for somebody to be on fire and bought in. And there's some really good kids there, and the potential's through the roof there. Can you talk about what drew you to Sardis uh, of all places? Well, what makes it kind of interesting is growing up at, at Glencoe, Sardis was one of our rivals. So I really only ever knew Sardis from a rivalry perspective. Gotcha. Um, until when I was at Jacksonville State and I did my student teaching, I actually got placed at Sardis High School. Oh, that's pretty good. Well, I didn't think so at the time. I hated it. You know, I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't, didn't want to go there. Um, you know, because I'm such a competitor, that was all I knew was I, I don't want to go up there. I don't like those people. I don't want nothing to do with them. <laughs> and then I got there. And uh, I did my student teaching with a guy named Ty Harris. Yep. Um, you know, he, he still works there today. That's how I got to meet Gene Hill as well, that, you know, was the coach there in the past, a great coach. Uh, and Josh Wallace, the principal, is there now. His yep. brother, Zach Wallace, Clay Wright. There was a lot of guys that are still working there today. And, man, I just fell in love with the staff that was there. And then the more I was around the kids, the kids were amazing. The kids were awesome. And I could just feel the sense of community and so it just gave me a whole new perspective of what it was like up there, and that was really kind of my draw. No doubt. I actually long, long time ago, like Fred Flintstone was there, graduated from there. Similar to you, I went two years at Attawall, two years at Sardis, and I can tell firsthand that community second to none. And, and really, man, it deserves uh, somebody to be bought in like you because I think, you know, looking down the road, this is going to be a blessing, the timing and everything with you. Uh, now, for those who've not seen you coach, on the sidelines, what should they expect like from you coaching-wise? Are you kind of a laid-back guy? Or are you more fiery? It, it depends. People ask me yeah. these kind of things. So. It depends. Um, you know, I'm a high-energy guy for sure. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be on them. I'm going to be demanding excellence. But then again, too, you know, there's times where you do have to keep your cool. So That's right. it'll be a little different role for me being in a head coach considering I've never done it before. You know, so as, as you know, Phil Jackson says, the captain panics, everybody panics. That's the cap, right. captain doesn't panic, you know, everybody's calm. That's right. Uh, but when, when it's time to chew tail or when it's time to get after somebody, I'll be glad to do that. No doubt. You know, so that's kind of the role I've been in lately. So uh, you know, we'll just come and go as it, as it sees. What are some of the advantages of you being at the 7A level? At, at, I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll go out on a limb here and say this with all, I mean, all confidence. Mm -hmm. I think the hardest region in America, seven-day yeah, region three. So. Talk about some of the advantages that you've had seeing the game from that side. It's a whole different world. Well, uh, definitely an insanely tough region. Uh, you know, every, just about every year you had us, Hewitt, and Thompson that would start off ranked top 40 in the country. and All top three and four in the it, state. Yeah, and, and you have <laughs> Hewitt Trustful, who's a, a great school, a great program, and – they haven't hosted a playoff game in five years. Could you imagine that? And they're in the top five every year. So it, it, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a crazy tough region. Uh, one thing I would say that just from being there is just, man, it, it's an experience in itself. Um, you just see so much ball, mm -hmm. so many schemes, so many things that, you know, somewhere at a smaller school, you might not necessarily get to install so many things. You, it's just – it's hard to even explain. You would just have to be in it and see it and to have something to compare it to. Um, it's just very, very, very high level yeah. football. And I've, you know, this is a statement by many people. A lot of people consider Josh Niblett 
without question, one of the greatest to ever do it. He's a mad scientist. scientist. Yeah. Being around him, I know you've picked up some things. Mm -hmm. um, talk about that, what you've learned from Niblet. You know, I know there's others, obviously, you've took mm -hmm. things away from, but most recently before Josh went to Gainesville, what are some of the things that just about the overall spectrum of coaching you picked up from him? Uh, I would, without a doubt, he's, he's the best leader I've ever been around. He's the most driven person I've ever been around. Uh, he can motivate anybody just about to do anything. Uh, he'll he'll motivate you to go to the restroom. <laughs> like, uh, Let's get after yeah, it. You know, he's a <laughs> but he's a great leader of men, yeah. uh, and that's no slot on his coaching because he is amazing at X and O's. Um, so is his brother Tad. You know that, that's with him. They're both excellent men, uh, excellent leaders. I would say that's the best thing from Josh Nibble, though, is just the leadership and how he can get people to take it another notch go another level, even as a staff, as coaches, you know, you roll in somewhere and you might be tired, you might be dragging and say, man, I just, I don't know I'm gonna make it through the day. He's gonna make sure you get through that day because he's, right. gonna, he's gonna make everyone is going to rise to his level and his standard. And honestly, it's amazing how he does it every day. So yeah. that's why he's one of the best. And uh, I can't let this interview go without mentioning this. Your sister is your biggest fan, Nikki. Oh, probably, yeah. I, 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 mean, I love Nikki, she's a great person and always supports you. How awesome is it that she just gets to drive right up the road now to see you instead of having to drive an hour one way each way? She'll be, she'll be excited about it for sure, you know. Uh, I have an awesome family. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and if they had to drive two hours, they would drive two absolutely. hours to see me. Without if they question. had to walk across the street, they would do it. You know, they when I was in high school, they were at every single football game, everywhere I've ever worked. They'll be probably some of the loudest group in there. <laughs> Definitely my sister will be one of the loudest, you know, and my wife, my, my little girls, everybody, they'll be at all the games. They'll no be doubt. in the community and uh, just blessed to have an awesome family. But they're all, they're all excited. What's some of the, before we shut this down, some of the just final thoughts, overall stuff, maybe with something we didn't cover that you'd like to say to the community or just anything you'd like to say before we shut the video down? Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to be the head football coach at Sardis High School. Uh, I'm ready to get in there and get to work. And anybody in the community that want to know anything about me is, um, man, I, I'm, I'm here to serve them. I'm here to serve the community. I'm here to serve the, serve the whole student body any way I can, any way I can be a service to anyone, I'd be more than glad to help. I love football. I love football. But there's so many more things in life that are important, more that's important right. than football. Um, you know, so that's the main thing I want people to know is that I'm a person first. I have a family. Just like others have a family, I will make bad calls. I've made bad calls before. You know, uh, you know that's why I joke around as an offensive guy. No one ever in the crowd questions defensive calls. You know, that's why, true. Why are they in cover four? Or why are they in cover three? That's why, true. Why did they blitz that guy off the edge? It's always, why did, why did they throw the ball right there? Why did they run that's it? True. Why are they doing that? You know, so um, I don't have all the answers, but I'm going to love their kid every day. And I'm going to push them to a level that they probably didn't think they could go to every day, whether that's physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And I'm going to try to make the best men possible that I can make. And before we close it down, last thing, uh, you've mentioned God. Obviously, this is Average Joe, so I own it, so we can do whatever we want to say on here. Yeah. And I got Josh and Reggie yeah. who started it with me, and they'll they'll sign off on this as well. But hey, how important is that to have that in your, have God in your mm -hmm. program mm -hmm. and in your corner when you're doing these things yeah. on and off the field? It's the most important. Um, 100%. You know, I wouldn't be, nobody would be where they are today if it wasn't just his unending mercy and grace and love that he gives me every single day. Uh, you know, and that's what I'm going to tell them guys every single day. He's the most important thing in my life, and he should be the most important thing in your life. You know, I, I've had instances where I've worked at other places where you don't have to necessarily share the same values I do. And, and uh, I'm a Christian. I believe that with all, you know, all my heart that Jesus sent, or God sent Jesus here to die on the cross for my sins. Uh, I have different people from different religions I coach that I'll talk to them up front with them. I'm going to pray with them every day when they come in. I'm going to pray with them when they leave. And it's no disrespect to him. You know, we just believe different things. And it doesn't matter what he believes. I'm still going to love him every, every day regardless of what he believes. And that's how I can show the true signs of what I believe in Get Christianity right. is by showing him that love. 100%. Hey. He's going to love you even if you run a quarterback snake on 4th and 31. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And my family's going to love me no matter if I'm the head coach at Sardis or if I'm sorting bolts at Lowe's. So that's why I always say Jesus that's is right. first. 
That's your family second. There you go. Or if Jesus first, everything else take care of. Oh, no, it all, it all yeah. getting it, getting lined. And you're yeah. exactly right on that. If he's on your side, brother. Ain't nobody gonna be against you. Yeah. They can try, but it ain't gonna work. BJ, congratulations. Appreciate congratulations it. on the hire. Yeah. Welcome back to Etowah County. We're looking forward to covering Appreciate you guys. it. Come Thank watch so us. Absolutely.